Hello, hello, everyone. Um, welcome to another edition of Founder Chats. So today we're going to be talking to Alicia Close, Ali Close. She's the um, founder and CEO of Women in Tech World, a nonprofit, um, a Canadian nonprofit, which we're going to get into a little bit more. I'm just waiting for Ali to join us. Welcome, welcome. Hello, everyone who's joining us right now. It's lovely to see you in New Ventures. Great to have a BC organization joining us here. And Gabby, let me just double check. Yes, she's asking if I'm live. So I'm gonna just check in with her. All right, this is the first time that Ali's joined us on a live, so she's new to it. Honestly, I think every single person who we so far have um, interviewed, here we go, are, um, been a first time for them so she's just joined us now um so Allie if you want to ask to join the conversation hopefully it's clear <laughs> it's a whole new world <laughs> doing all of this I actually have a completely new setup right now um, which is slightly precariously perched so here we go okay all right let's see if this all works out fine and dandy Waiting, connecting. There we go. <laughs> Hi. Awesome. Hello. Close to me. Okay, this is good to know. <laughs> uh, it just like completely changes the way it looks as soon as you get on. Okay. How are you doing? Great. How are you? Yeah, this is my first time on an IG live. Yes, I know. Uh -huh. <laughs> so exciting. Yes, welcome to your first ever IG live. Oh my goodness, my computer is, oh, okay, hold on. My little stand was sitting on my keypad and it was confusing my computer. Okay, I think we're good now. I'm just gonna move you slightly farther away. I think we're good now. Okay, sorry about that. Uh -huh. um, it's always just like a completely new experience every time. All right, hello everyone who's joined us. Welcome, welcome. Lovely to have you here. If you missed the introduction, we are going to be talking to Ali Close today, who has now joined us. Um, and Ali is the CEO and founder of Women in Tech World. So I know we have lots to talk about, so I don't want to dilly dally too much. Um, <laughs> like Ali and I have been going back and talking about so many things lately, and I was like, we got to get you on um, IG Live. I think we started talking about this a couple of months ago, having you yes. on. <laughs> There's always so much to talk about, and it just seemed like really good timing. So for everyone who doesn't know, um, it was a Women in Tech World is a Canadian nonprofit organization dedicated to advancing um, women in tech through community-based research and data-driven programming. And um, just to be completely transparent, I'm also on um, the leadership team at Women in Tech World, but I'm putting on my volition hat here today. I'm going to be asking Allie questions as if I have no idea what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> We're having a conversation around what is happening all of our chats yes. but live and I'm so I'm so excited excited curious um to hear your thoughts particularly on an article you sent me that I just find I think it's gonna be really interesting so with no further ado welcome Ali please say hello and um, let us know how are you doing today thanks Mel yes yeah, super excited to be here um and have this conversation I am Doing well. We're in phase two, which happened yesterday in Toronto. I'm based in Toronto. So that's very much welcomed. <laughs> um, and looking forward, we have some patios opening and things like that, which is really nice. Um, what a strange time. And I was talking to someone yesterday uh, and just thinking like I saw them in January and it feels like nothing ago because in the last few months, I don't know what happened. Um, I know. So, well, yes. I was in Toronto in February. Yeah. Which, to me, it feels like a really long time ago, but because we've done so much between now and then, um, even at Women in Tech World, but it's, yeah, time is a different construct right now, I feel. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like it's, a continuum, a exactly. weird continuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, okay, so I know... Obviously, I know that Women in Tech World were fully distributed distributed team anyways, so I know like going, having to go virtual didn't really impact us, but I, I know there's been a lot of people questioning kind of like, um, we're hearing a lot what's happening to startups, we're hearing a lot what's happening to companies, but as a nonprofit, 
we haven't heard as many stories from that side of things. So even though we didn't, weren't really impacted by going virtual, I was curious if you could just give us like a little bit of insight in terms of what it's been like to be a nonprofit founder during this time and if there's been any significant changes. Definitely, yeah. So um, for everyone on the call, just women in tech world, we're focused on two main areas. One is community-based research and the other side is community-based programming. And so with that, the research that we do really influences and where we support women in tech and where there are understanding where there are gaps um, to support them with programming across Canada, but also uh, globally, we've started to support women out of Europe, Costa Rica, um, and the US as well. And so with that, our research piece and what Mel was talking about when she was here in February, we were very fortunate that we, with the research that we've done with Women in Tech World, we started grassroots across the country, heard from 16,000 voices around 17. what are the issues. <laughs> yeah. Oh, 2017. Yes. <laughs> And then, um, and from there, uh, just finished a project with the government of Canada where Mel was helping to facilitate these re interactive research activities to inform their women in STEM strategy at the federal level. And so with that, it, we were very fortunate. We finished the in-person and we're doing all of the analysis and everything that was virtual, that could be done virtually and connected with the teams uh, within the government and with our team. It was already distributed, so we were able to continue as we normally would with that project and complete it successfully, which was amazing that everything lined up for us. And just... Oh, Ali, you're just... You just we just lost you a little bit there. You're back. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes, we can now. So we're, okay, awesome. We got through all of uh, the research and then and then you'd cut out a little bit. Hi, Glory. Nice to have you here. Oops. Go for it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Hey, Glory. <laughs> and then so the other piece that I was talking about. Can you hear me? Yes. Awesome. Um, <laughs> that we are. All of our programming is virtual, and so Glory actually. Um, and my CEO, as well as Discovery Foundation, run a mastermind program. And so the, uh, with that, it's all distributed. And we bring women in tech from across the country and uh, around the world to come together in small groups. So with that, uh, we've been very fortunate to be able to continue the initiatives that we've been running. But it's been really interesting on the other side, just to follow along in the support that has been given from the government of Canada to small businesses and nonprofits and those different pieces is it doesn't it hasn't been tailored to support nonprofits in a great way just because it was really based on monthly income whereas nonprofits um, and us included it's typically where we're looking at corporate sponsorship or a big contract where it's you're receiving money in lump sums and so that has been an uh, interesting piece in um, just talking with different government agencies and how to get support for nonprofits during this time. Because yeah. of the way that the funding was delivered, it doesn't apply, apply to us. And funding that people did get was for, a lot of it was for in-person projects, and that was something that we also had to adjust on. So it's been kind of an interesting learning experience, I think, um, as well. Hi, it's great to see you, Glory, as well. Uh, hello to everyone who's joined. I know have, some have joined just in the last couple minutes. So welcome, welcome. Um, so you know we're just having a bit of a casual conversation, a chit chat here. But um, but please do send in your um, your questions you have for Ali. Say hi. Let us know where you're joining us from. So um, interact as much as you'd like. We'd love to see what you have to say. Um, yeah. Okay. So we've been talking a little bit about how living the nonprofit life during this time has affected um, women in tech world, which we, as you're saying, has been, have been very fortunate. I think that's fantastic. But something that you have talked to, to me quite a bit about is, um, and touched on, I know like you care so much about the people that we work with and the people we've done our research with and the entire community and yourself being very entrenched in the women in tech community. Um, there's been conversations we've been having around how has COVID impacted women in tech 
in particular. Um, and I know there's a lot to unpack there, but I'd love to know just kind of off the bat, just diving into the thick of it, kind of what's your initial impressions and like, what have you seen in Canada? I don't know if you've been looking at trends in other areas, but particularly in Toronto and Canada, what have you been seeing? Yeah, so it's, that was one of the pieces where we, as an organization, there's so much support that was needed um, right at the start of COVID for women in tech. And so when we talk about women in tech with women in tech world, it is a broad range of that women that are working within tech companies, um, also tech founders, tech executives. And so just managing like with tech founders, supporting with the ups and downs and changes of and pivots of their business to also women that were working, laid off, and those different pieces. So we started a program right at the beginning of COVID to provide access to mentorship um, for women. And it sold out, extra, sold out, I mean, it was for free, but um, <laughs> they sold out immediately. Whatever people yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a big... Um, that was a big piece of like information around, okay, there is so much support that is needed here. How, what can we do and what partners can we bring on to be able to continue to support? Cause this isn't it. We launched that at the beginning or at the end of March, but this is going to be a long road. Right. Um, and so with that, we have been, so We've done over like between 75 and 100 different mentor moments um, at, that started. And then from there, I've been working with the Discovery Foundation as well as my CEO and excited to announce here that um, at the next Volition Pitch Night, we're going to be able to provide a prize for tech founders, that women tech founders that are interested um, and we're working on sending this out to different community partners where we can provide access to uh, specific peer-to-peer -peer mentorship in a mastermind program with high packed impact uh, experts that we bring in every month based on the needs of the tech founders. And so, yeah, it's so <laughs> exciting. Um, and so we'll be launching that prize at Volition's Pitch Night on June 30th and really excited to get the word out. If you know any tech, women tech founders that are desperate for support right now, we have a number of spots available for our next mastermind program and are wanting to support as much as we can. Amazing. And I think you, I think you kind of explained the mastermind program. Um, is it, what's the length so, of time? adjusted the length of time what is that now it's six months and two hours so it's two hour sessions yeah. once a month yeah. and then you're connected um with the group it's up to eight women per group and you're connected with that group as an accountability circle throughout so you will work with them between month to month but um the in the sessions in person in person uh on zoom are yeah. two hours yeah Okay, and there's different, um, like with this with this um, program, you get classified into or grouped into different groups, correct? Yeah. So with this, this focus is um, that we have the support for is for our tech founders um, piece. But right now, we're okay. running. Yeah, we've already run two, or they're in the um, they're in their fifth fifth month for aspiring leaders as well as tech executives. And we'll be launching those programs again in the fall. But this, this cohort um, that we're supporting is for tech founders specifically. Okay. Amazing. Okay. So everyone who's listening, whether you're listening live or listening later on, <laughs> check this out. How, where can they find more information about this? Yes. Yeah, so womanintechworld.com slash masterminds and all of the information's there register at the bottom your yeah. interest and we're happy to hop on a call and give you more information as well okay awesome everyone so that's specifically for women tech founders now but in the fall there's going to be offerings for other women in tech as well um and we've been doing these programmings for over a year now and they're they always go incredibly well it's i had the honor of being able to be um 
take part in one as an expert and it was such a great experience um, as well. So I really highly recommend this. Um, this is different to the mentor moments that um, Ali was talking about previously, which is something we've been providing through, um, through the our- collective. Yeah, through our membership program. The collective is what that's called. Um, it's really cool. And both all of these things, I just wanted to reiterate in case it was lost by anyone, uh, that these came out of the, the community-based research that we did. So we talked to you know 1,600 women and men in the tech, tech industry and um, or more now. And uh, there was kind of prevailing things that people were looking for and needing in order to um, break down different barriers they're experiencing. And a huge one, as I'm sure no one's surprised, was mentorship and these networks and connections. And so this is something we're very proud of at Women in Tech World to be able to provide. Um, and it's been so cool seeing the mentor moment um, program taking off with everything with COVID. As you said, like 75 mentor moments, which are really, they're really short too, correct? Like 15 minutes. Yeah, so 50, between 15 and 30 minutes, but even the 15 minutes, we it's right to the point and provide the resources right away. And we've had really great feedback of like, the, it was very actionable women that we're able to support and pivot their business um, and different pieces like that. So yeah, it's um, well great feedback from them. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, that's really great to know. So that's how Women in Tech has been impacted. The women in our communities, community has been impacted. Now, I know you've also been having lots of conversations with other um, diversity, equity, and inclusion experts. You've had conversations with other women in tech who um, who are working on a lot of really important things across Canada. You're going to be in an event next Tuesday, right before our pitch event. Um, I don't have the times in mind because I'm in Madrid, so I get confused about what times things are. And Ali's in Toronto, and most things in my mind are in Pacific time. So I'm a little bit confused. But <laughs> there's an event on Tuesday <laughs> that Ali's going to be talking on a panel. Um, it's called Behind the Window Dressing of Canada's Tech, tech Sector. Um, and it's going to be talking about some really interesting things and having a really com candid conversation. Um, so I want to dig into that a bit and just, there, I know that there was like, there was one question that was in, on there. Um, actually, no, I'm not going to go there yet, but I want to talk about that and I have it written down. I'm going to remember to come back to it. But the reason I was going down this, this train of thought was thinking again about how, um, about this impact on women in tech on a broader scale. So outside of the women in tech, uh, community. Um, you brought to my attention this article um, that's in the star. Uh, and for anyone listening, it's called, I can't link it here. I don't know how to link it here, but it's called Canadians working from home permanently should expect salary changes. And this is something that you got super heated about. So I wanted to give you some space to talk about that and what it, like what they were talking about it and what it meant to you. Um, and it's kind of about like the future of remote work and how it's going to impact women. So how COVID is going to long-term potentially impact women. Yeah, and so I'm interested as well if anyone has any questions as we're having this discussion, um, because it's it's a very interesting topic that has just come up and with COVID and how it's impacted women at working at home, um, not only in the tech industry, but how every like women that have been at home with kids, um, a lot of times the burden has been shifted back to them to support with schooling as well as um, the household duties and then their job um, that is now based from their home. And yeah. so with that um, and these additional, like with no support, like you don't have daycare, the additional support that you would typically have, um, it's been a challenging time for a number of women that I've been speaking with. And so when reading this article in the star, it's just, there's, there's benefits to working from home and we, there's, um, research actually, or a study that was put out by URLs, um, their, uh, diversity and inclusion council, um, out of Montreal and they're focused on, and they did a survey with 190 women in tech and understanding their, like, how we can support them, what the challenges are. And so 45% said that nothing had really changed within their work environment. Either they were working the same or more. Um, and so I just wanted to point that out because then within this article, it's talking about, well, being able to go remotely, Facebook just announced that in, in May that, yes, 
we're going fully remote, you're more than welcome to do that. But if you're a Canadian or American, whatever city you end up in, it will change how um, your salary will change based on the surrounding, like the income of your similar role within that city. And so it's, yeah. it sparked an interesting, like, a lot of questions came up for me around that. And one of the pieces is, like, already there is a pay gap for women in tech and um, other industries as well. And that's because of uh, one of the pieces is there isn't, a, it, there's not transparency in pay. There isn't um, transparency in processes. A lot of times there's like favoritism um, for promotions, these types of things. Uh, and then on top of it, uh, an, another piece is like negotiating and making sure that you are negotiating. A lot of times men will negotiate more than women. And so with, with that already being a factor then and women's pay already being lower, then if they're moving to a new city, and it's the wages are being decreased. How is this going to impact the pay equity gap? And a lot of times women are looking for, based on the research that we have done, a big piece of support for women is the work-life balance piece, is yeah. being able to have the support. Um, and like parental leave is a big piece. Being able to have um, men have the same time off as women all of those pieces that really impact it. And so um, a question came up is like, how is this going to, I see that this will create a bigger divide. Um, yeah. And so it's interesting in the article, um, Mel, I'll let you go. No, I was gonna say, is it, and the reason being because it's more, if there's an opportunity to work from home, then we would expect to see based on research and anecdotal evidence as well, we would expect to see more women opt for working from home, which therefore means they will have lower salaries based on what Facebook and other companies are saying. That's correct? Yes. Um, that, yeah, that's one component of it as well, is that women would end up opting for that option, which yeah. would lower their salary. And, and then there's, so there's an, in the article, they reference GitLab, which is a company that has been working remotely uh, way before COVID as well. Yeah. And so they have a calculator that they use and they don't allow anyone to, in the article it says, um, I hadn't, I didn't know about this company before. And so they say that in, they use this calculator to help create transparency and don't yeah. allow you to negotiate your salary. And it's not based on past wages um, yeah. or salary that you had. It's based on what is specific to your role, your the region that you're living in, what they yeah. will offer you. Yeah, the market. Um, mm -hmm. Local market and I find, yeah, and I find that really interesting um, because then I think we always, and this is a, a question, I don't know if anyone has asked any questions, but I think it's uh, interested your thoughts on this, everyone that's watching as well, because it's, it, a lot of times we think, oh, calculator transparent and like technology equals it, there's, yeah, data, there's no, there's no bias, right? right? And an article just came out um, as well around a study that was done on Uber and Lyft and how they're um, charging more for, to, if a ride goes to black communities. And so with that, there's both of the companies have come back and said, oh, well, like these factors weren't included, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just, it, it poses a question of like when, when we're developing these technologies um, to, to create transparency and like how, what is in the back end? How are they being developed? What biases are in there? And so I can't speak to the GitLab calculator. I don't know. Um, but I just, I, I think a lot of times we take it for granted and it's something that we need to question as well of yeah. like, okay, is, 
is this actually not a biased way of doing it? Um, and what are the technologies that we are using and who is being excluded? Yeah. And then how do we measure that? Like, I'm curious, like you're saying, like, I'm curious to see what will happen as a result of these, um, of, of Facebook and all these companies saying, um, you're, you can work from home, but your pay is going to be le lower. And we're thinking, how is that going to affect pay equity? I wonder if someone's going to be looking at that, you know, and that's something that at Women in Tech World, we question a lot of things. <laughs> and like the reason we started, well, the, I mean, the reason that the Driving Women Tech and our entire research project started was because Ali was like, oh, let's figure out what women in tech need. And then did research and was like, there's no research to show me what they actually need and want and what they're actually experiencing. Like in Canada, there was just no large scale, qual large scale qualitative research, just wasn't there. So that was the reason that Ali drove this entire project from the start, which is incredible. Um, and I encourage everyone who's watching this now or later to get hold of Ali, especially if you're interested in women in tech. And if you're interested just in data and if you're interested in research and community-based research. Um, seriously, very, very incredible, a really incredible woman to, to know and get to work with. So um, uh, Glory also said here that we should encourage people to talk about salaries with each other. It used to be taboo, but it shouldn't be. So yes. yeah, I'm curious to see like, you know, a year from now, um, two years from now, three years from now, what's going to be that, that fallout and that impact? Um, I guess we're just going to have to wait and see. Um, I know we're getting to the end of our time and I know we started a little bit late so I'm gonna be willing to go a couple minutes over um, <laughs> but there's always just so much to talk about so we won't unpack what's happening at the event but essentially everything Ali just talked about and the way you're hearing that our mind thinks and questioning things a lot of the conversation it sounds like on Tuesday is going to be like around questioning things and saying like why is tech upset uh what does it say why is tech obsessed with the wrong kind of diversity data like questions like that that she's going to be asking can you just Give us an idea of where, how this concept was birthed, which I know it's been super quick in the making. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. It all started from last week uh, and just a candid conversation that myself and Kristen from Tidal Equity were, our equality were having and just around, and it really birthed from understanding the core problems of women in tech and that a lot of times it ends up being really surface layer diversity and inclusion initiatives that happen and being able to get to the root cause. How can we do that? Questioning, um, as I was right now about the data processes as well. Like, how can we do that and create systemic change and so that's um yeah that's the basis in really diving in, into that, those pieces and the the research and how we conduct research and um getting getting to the root of the problem yeah and that will be with Kristen um who's a is what's her title diversity Equity she's a consultant yes respect? and co-ceo of title equality yeah, and then with Rachel as well. Who is a diversity and inclusion advocate and um, as well. And so she'll be focused on, uh, it's bringing all of different experts within in the space together and we're all very candid um, and we will be challenging each other a lot. <laughs> so it will be a good discussion. I've worked with all three of these women. It's going to be really interesting i think um yeah so so shay was asking wh what and where can we find the data i think glory has answered that though so thank you glory um so mm -hmm. womenintechworld.com there's the canada's gender equity roadmap there's also a bc gender equity roadmap um as well so check that out and ask us any questions so this person asking questions she's going to be one of our panelists at tuesday's women's pitch count uh, no 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 i'm lying europe women's pitch europe july 15th <laughs> that's meant to say um which is awesome awesome thanks, thanks for joining i'm all confused <laughs> um okay great so that's tuesday's event where can people find tuesday's event on so it's crowdcast um on our linkedin and i will share it on women in tech world uh okay we'll share all it. of our social channels so we'll at women okay. in tech world here on yep. instagram you'll find it there <laughs> okay Perfect. Okay. Lots of things going on. All right. So we've talked about being a working as a nonprofit during this time. We've talked about 
um, how COVID's affected our community and how we've worked with them, how it's kind of potentially going to impact women um, going forward in ways that we have yet to be known um, or have yet to know. And so many questions. And um, so I know there's another thing I really want to touch on uh, before we leave. So I'm going to let this go over time because it's really important. Um, another announcement of ours at Women in Tech World, which I will let Ali speak to, but essentially another question around the future of women in, in tech world and where we are headed. Um, and, and we have a bit of a bit of an announcement and an ask at the same time wrapped into one. Mm -hmm. I'm going to leave it to you, Ali. Yes. So <laughs> I do. <laughs> Thanks, Mel. No, it's been a, awesome to come on here and chat with you today. I, as I had mentioned, just big vision for Women in Tech World is creating tech communities that are equitable and inclusive and grounded in the needs of women and the LGBT2Q+. Um, I hate yeah. plus. <laughs> um, because it's so important to, to really understand as we've been talking about today, their ex lived experiences. And that's a big um, piece of our driving wind tech approach is what we call it. Our research approach is having women tell their stories and lived experiences to be able to create organizational change. And so with that ultimate big audacious goal uh, for our organization, we we'll want to and have put out applications for a volunteer executive director to come on board and lead this. Um, and so that uh, is available. The job description is available on Charity Village. Uh, it is also, it will also be shared on Instagram. Since we're all here, I'll share all of these links. And uh, yeah, I'm just excited. It was great to have everyone here asking questions. And if you know anyone in your network that would be interested and please share, uh, we'd love to connect with them. Yeah. Great. So mm -hmm. you heard it here first, unless you saw it on my LinkedIn recently, um, they are hiring a volunteer executive director. Um, the organization is, I, I know I'm biased, but it's such an incredible organization to work with literally has changed my life. I'm, can you still hear me? I know I'm, I think I'm yes. frozen. Can you hear me though? I can hear you. Yes. Oh, uh, drama. Um, yeah. So it's, it's, it really has been life changing experience for me. Um, completely changed my understanding of the experiences of women, um, in male dominated industries. Um, and even how I myself uh, adjust, have adjusted my behavior over the years. So it's very, it has been a very eye-opening experience for me. You get to do such incredible um, projects and work with really amazing people. As my CEO is saying, it's a great organization driven by great values, and I can definitely attest to that. It's been absolutely amazing. I'm really excited to continue the, the journey and with a new executive director or with a executive, executive director uh, as well on our team. So... Um, Ali and I are both really excited to meet you, whoever you are. Yes. <laughs> um, okay, so I wanted to also ask, um, okay, so I think we've already covered what, how, how the audience can us, but is there anything you would like to add in terms of how, this, how can, we like to ask, like, what is your ask? How can the audience support you here today? Do you feel like you've already covered that or do you have anything you want to add? Uh, so I think I'll just bring it back. Like if you're a tech founder that needs support in BC, across Canada, please reach out. We are putting together the tech um, founders cohort for the mastermind and we really want to support you. So please do reach out uh, on our website, womenintechworld.com slash masterminds. And then if you know anyone that would be excited about our mission, love to chat with them as well for the volunteer EV role. Awesome. Is there anything I haven't ca captured that you wanted to capture here? Anything else? No, that's great, Mel. Thank you so much. It's, uh, Mel has sung so many praises about me on this and I cannot, like, it's, we have both co-created all of like driving WinTech and this incredible research. We're both very biased. We uh, talk very <laughs> highly of it, obviously. Um, but yeah, it like, 
would not have been possible without her. And it's been incredible to have these candid conversations and continue to do so and challenge each other um, to create better spaces. Crazy. Mm -hmm. Crazy thinking about it, everyone. <laughs> Go back and yes. check out what we were presenting. Ali just sent me a bunch of photos of ridiculous mo moments from our trip, I think. Um, so <laughs> from our recent tour across Canada. Yeah, it's quite the experience. So um, last thing I'd like to ask, um, you both rock. Oh, thanks, Glory. Um, so last thing I'd like to ask everyone who comes on here, because the times are what they are, um, what is one thing that brings you joy right now? It's uh, climbing the stairs for hours. <laughs> I have moved. <laughs> I moved from Vancouver to Toronto. There's no mountains here, but I want to do a massive mountain excursion soon. And that has been bringing me joy to it get get out of my tiny condo <laughs> and do something. <laughs> he literally walks up the stairs to like the what, what floor are you on? What, you do you walk like twenty floors or something? Oh, like four hours, four to five hours up and down. Four hours. <laughs> yeah, stairs. brings her joy. <laughs> yes, it's great. <laughs> I Time for myself. <laughs> I love yeah because because Ali was saying she's able to um listen to podcasts and things that she doesn't usually get time to do being a very busy CEO of a nonprofit as well as other jobs um all over the place and work she does for volunteer and so many different things so these four hours walking up and down stairs <laughs> gives her a new time <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> all right <laughs> cool okay thank you so much for coming on Ali um We'll have to have you again because it's just a delight. <laughs> you talk about awesome, that. yeah. Anyways, but live in front of everybody. Um, no, it's really great having you on. And I mean, Women Tech World such an amazing partner. Again, totally biased. But such an amazing partner of Volition as well. I've managed to, to make partnership of the two, and it's fantastic. <laughs> as Ali mentioned, on Tuesday, we have our Women's Pitch Canada, um, which um, Women Tech World is one of our partners with or on. And um, there's going to be an opportunity to win one of those spots um, I don't know if I'm saying this right, but when to, to, is it win one spot? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Or to it, be uh, able to get a spot for. Yeah. Yes. Okay, cool. I will have it all down <laughs> by, by Tuesday. Um, but I hope to see you all there. Go to volitionadvisors.com slash events to check out and get your ticket for that. But otherwise we will see you awesome. on Tuesday for our next founder chat here on live. So thanks, Ali. It's great to have you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Great to see you. Thanks, everyone, for joining. Thank you. Bye.